Jack Hind coming in hot on the Riley Roundtable. Jack, question for you. Why do you hate Mary Poppins Returns so much, man? Um, I wasn't the biggest fan of Mary Poppins Returns just because it was too fantastical for me, Riley. And I guess the <laughs> whole point of the film, right, is that if you don't believe in it, Mary Poppins isn't going to... You haven't got the magic. You haven't got... I've lost it. I guess I've lost the belief. I've lost the magic because yeah. that film didn't grip me and didn't take me to where it was that I wanted it to be. See, you know what I was hoping for? I was hoping for the Jack that I saw talk about this movie earlier. You were you were ready. You were it, just. It, yeah. it was rubbish. What do you want from me? It was not a good film. That's it what I wanted. Enjoyed. Emily Blunt was great. Don't get me wrong. She was amazing. But Lin Manuel Miranda and his attempt at trying to be the new Dick Van Dyke didn't work. Yeah. Okay. It was supposed to be a street lamp, a lamplight, and not a <laughs> chimney sweep, but whatever. It just. All these Disney movies that they're remaking, I mean, I, people will slaughter me, but I'm not even excited for Lion King, the live action. Really? I'm oh, not excited for these live action films that they're coming up because yeah. these, are, these are the films that I grew up on. You know, these Disney films are the things that I was shown as a kid. And now it's like, why do you have to do this to me in real life as well? I have yeah. no interest. I'm still going to see it, obviously. Let's yeah. be completely honest. Same. But these, these reimaginations or sequels of everything that we've done before, I just don't think that we need them. That's interesting. Uh, Lion King, I'm, I'm all in for. I, I get, though, because that was such an important film for me that it's like, do I really need to see another version of this? Um, I'm, I'm more interested to see what they might do new, if they're adding more songs, where the voice performance, where are the effects? Give me a spin-off. Give me a Scar Origins. Hey, I'm ooh, down. I like you know, that. That's what I'm thinking. Like, why do we have to... We're not reinventing the wheel, but let's, like, change the wheel a little bit. Let's put new rims on the Disney ride instead. So instead of just regurgitating the stuff that we've got, let's have some fun with some new stuff. And now that I'm older... I, I, I want to see, like I said, I want to see Scar's origin story. I want to see Mufasa way before as well. Let's get Ooh. like Mufasa being born and his and how he became king originally. That's a good idea. I like that. I haven't seen Mary Poppins Returns, but I've heard the mixed Don't things. And yeah, I, I'm, I mean, I Wait want until to Netflix. see it. It'll be on Netflix in a month or two months, I'm I, sure. I want, to, yeah, probably. And, and the thing is, is because I'm, I'm now picking and choosing the movies I see because of Work here, work everywhere, all these different things. I don't go to all the press screenings like all. We have our guys to, yeah, to exactly. do the reviews. So I'm going to skip the movies that I don't necessarily want to see and go into the theater, have the theater uh, theatrical experience, opening yeah. night, that kind of stuff. Mary Poppins miss me, though. You know, uh, it's, it's a bullet, <laughs> bullet dodged, as one would say. <laughs> And I was in the theater for it as well. I was yeah. sat in the theater. I was sat kind of close. So I don't know if that made a difference. Okay. But yeah, it almost made me feel sick sometimes. Like, because it was like, and took you into a whole new world. And you're like, oh, where am I now? Yeah, speak, and, speaking of whole new worlds, Aladdin Aladdin. Is the, Aladdin's the movie that I'm looking at as being like, that might bomb. I don't know. There's something about it that is not necessarily working for me right now in the marketing materials. And I love Aladdin, grew up, all that. But is yeah, Will we'll Smith see. your genie? Is Will Smith my genie? Yeah. I don't I don't know what he's gonna be like. I love Will Smith. Like yeah. Joshua Noah as well. We talk about bad boys all the time. Will bad Smith, boys huge I'm all fan. Fresh Prince, massive. Yeah. Anything Will Smith does, I robot cried the whole way for it. And well, when obviously the part went Sam's dog. Right. Spoiler yeah. alert, but yeah. if you haven't seen Sorry. If you haven't seen I Am Legend, not well, and I Robot. I am Legend yeah. and I Robot. Right. Um, so yeah, that it's it's hard for me to see him yeah. as it, which is my and now I know that I'm gonna be blocked off of everything else because I'm going to be too busy focusing on whether or not Will Smith is killing it as genie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, well, he has a tall order. He's coming on the heels of Robin Williams. Yeah, Everybody's exactly. going to have that voice in their head. So we'll see. I mean, as far as the Disney movie, you know, remakes, reimaginings, reboots, whatever you want to call them, it's an interesting time. I like your opinion. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about that. What, my opinion? No, don't do that. <laughs> Welcome one and all, everyone, to the Riley Roundtable. It is episode 30. That is right, episode 30. We talk about life. We talk about movies. We talk about movies and life and everything in between. Just not Lifetime movies. Not Lifetime movies. You heard him up top. It's Jack Hind, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so glad to have you here, my friend. Let's not bury the lead here. Before we started this, Jack had the brilliant idea to have a glass of wine as two gentlemen sitting and talking. We had a bottle in the office. It's Game of Thrones bottle of wine and i went yeah you know i don't know it's tempting and then you start looking for the bottle opener and i said all right i can have a glass of wine then we didn't have a bottle opener so jack and i out back used the heel of a shoe jack's shoe to be more precise 
And we opened this motherfucking bottle of wine. Cheers, my friend. Because we deserve it, Riley. We do. We deserve we it. Do. Happy New Year, sir. Thank you. Happy, Thank you for having me. Yeah, Happy New Year. No, I wanted to get you on for a while now because I wanted to get the history of Jack because you uh, are one of those guys that made such an impression of me when I first met you. And I met you at the Schmodown. You came in. You 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 did your thing. Um and, I, and then you, ca- you continue to come back, and I was like, and you're very nice to me. You're like, Riley, how are you doing? I'm not going to do your accent. Don't worry. <laughs> and I was like, that guy's really cool. And then uh, I, you know, I knew a little bit about you behind the scenes, where you're working, all that. And then the Cobra Kai YouTube party That's happened. That's the one. And we closed that shit down. Oh. I had some drinks. You drove me home. <laughs> And then, lo and behold, you're working here, and I, I think you're a dynamic guy. I think you're somebody that um, everybody needs to be keeping an eye out for, and I truly believe that. I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. So, cheers. Let's start with how the hell did you get to America? <laughs> so, I'll take this quick sip because it's lovely. Game <laughs> of Thrones wine. Gives me a breather. Mm-hmm. Mm. So ah, Delicious. I had the wonderful privilege of obviously being in England, growing up in England, in case you couldn't tell where I am from. Uh, Grew up in a place called Essex. Okay. Parts of it were lovely, parts of it not so nice, like Mm -hmm. everywhere you go in the world. Sure. Uh, My parents were very driven on getting us to the next level, getting us to the next level. Always wanted to improve, as great parents do. Mine were wonderful. And so at the age of 10, I moved over to Dubai. Yeah, the, uh, the Dubai part is interesting for me. Why, why Dubai? <laughs> uh, Dad's work took him out there. He worked at scaffolding. So like when you see a building, the outside of it, when it's got all the poles up it. So my dad used to build those. And then when it was over in, when they got moved over to Dubai, it was more so like a managerial role. Okay. Um, so he moved out there, started working on one of the malls and then got the airport job. Well, his company got the airport job, which Ooh, then that's hired a huge him. one, right? And it was fortunately right during Dubai's boom as well. So we moved there in about 2005. Okay. So he was there for, I mean, we were there, they've been there 13 years now, I think it is. Uh, wow. Yeah, February this year will be 13 years for them. Jeez. So it was seven years for me before then I moved to America at the ripe age of 17 and a half years old. <laughs> I always forget, you are an old soul. Yeah. You're an old soul with business. Your business is just right on the money. I, I actually am now learning from you. I sit there and I go, listen, listen to this guy. See, this is interesting because I still... I know I talk a lot, believe me, I know I talk a lot in the office and I know I talk a lot when it comes to people, but that's because that's the way that I learn. It was a huge issue with me in school. My teachers used to hate me questioning them so much. And I was like, well, I I don't like to just hear the first answer. I like to ask you on that and then ask you on that. And so even the first year that I was here in uh, America, Uh for the first eight months, I went to a school to, (laughs) I went to a school called the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. So obviously, why did I move out to LA? I want to be an actor. I want to be an actor. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You wanted to start being an actor? I didn't. I did. So I grew up in musical theater and stuff anyways and acting because it was better than any of the other classes. Come on, let's be honest. This is what I love about the round table because (laughs) I didn't know that about you. Same. (laughs) I grew up in musical theater. Yeah, West Side Story, Sweeney West Side Todd, Story, all of them. Yeah, West Side Story, Grease. Yeah, Grease, Little massive. Abner. I did Little Abner. <laughs> little fucking Abner. Uh, Sound of Music, which I hate. Yeah. I hate Sound of Music so much. It's the most boring musical. Sorry, all you Sound of Music all fans All those Sound there. of Music fans. But that, that's incredible. So yeah. I, I, I had no idea. Well, in Dubai, there wasn't... Like, I've always... I, I fed off of people's energy as well. Like, believe me, I'm... I, uh, everybody says this, but I believe I'm a mix of an introvert and an extrovert. So I know that yeah. when I'm with people, I can feed off of them and I can do what I need to do. Mm-hmm. But also, at the same time, I love to sit at home with my cats and spend time to myself. Yeah. So, like, I, I, I don't Very know what similar. the word is for the both of them, but whatever it is, I'm a. I think you're whatever. balanced. Balanced. I, I, yeah. There are times I want to be at home and doing yeah. nothing, and there are times that I really want to get out and, and, and do my thing. And in Dubai, there wasn't that much of an opportunity for kids my age. I mean, I started drinking at about 13 years old because there was <laughs> literally man. nothing else to do out there. Right. But that was the easiest thing to go and do. And then acting and sports were then the other types, the two things that I could do out there. Sure. So spent a lot of time doing musical theatre and acting. And then obviously LA is the place to go. So at 17, I said to my mom, I was like, I don't want to be in Dubai anymore. She was like, fine, you can apply for a school. I said, I want to apply for this school. She was like, okay, if you get in, you can go. And I got in. And I, got I, in. I found out on my 17th birthday, actually, on the day of my party, we were stood there doing karaoke, June 23rd. <laughs> We were stood there doing karaoke uh, in the like the back room of my house where we had like all the parties and stuff. And then I got the email and the phone call from the school. Okay. So I was like, you couldn't have asked for a better birthday present. That's fantastic. Um, and then, yeah, moved out here, did that for about the first eight months. But going back to what I was talking about being outspoken is that one of the, my teachers, not going to name her, mm-hmm. um, she 
she was the only person at the end of the year that didn't want me coming back into the school because I intimidated her. Yeah, Fine. I can see that. I'm a large guy. I understand that she was an older elderly woman. Your personality, t- introvert, extrovert, whatever, your thirst for knowledge. You're asking yeah. questions. Mm. I hate te- – like sometimes – my mom and my sister, grew. they're, they're teachers, right? <laughs> I grew up uh, with teachers. So they're always correcting my I'm grammar. I'm right, you're wrong. Yeah, that, that, that kind of stuff. Yeah. But they would lose their shit, I think. If they heard that the teacher was like, you asked too many questions. Yeah. I yeah. think that's a ridiculous That was statement. what blew my mind as yeah. well. Because it's like, hold on a minute. You should be feeding off of my urge and my wants. And that will open up conversations, discussions. So, oh, you know what Jack just asked? That's a good one for the classroom. But what do you think? You know, blah, blah, blah. Invite everybody yeah. into the conversation. For and God I would sakes. try and even set up times outside of class as well. If the teacher wasn't happy with the amount of questions that I was asking inside of class, I would try and set up time with them outside. And I never got it. So I'll tell you what, I'm gonna, we're paying a lot of money for this school. Right. I'm going to get my, well, my parents way it wasn't right. me so i had that <laughs> weighing on my shoulders as well i want to get as much out of all this money that my parents have spent as possible yeah get your education and so uh, at the end of eight months they said if you apologize to said teacher you'll be able to get let back into the school and like do a written apology and everything and like work on that and i was like unfortunately no i'm not going to go against my my morals and my beliefs just so that i can get in and pay another fifty thousand dollars to go to this school for another year oh, or man. not even that eight months yeah. and so then off jackie went <laughs> In the streets of Los Angeles at 17 and a... Well, I, I turned 18 by then. So, yeah, I was that, about 18 and two months floating around LA. That's fantastic. So, where, where like, what was your first apartment? Uh, Yucca. 6600 Yucca. Yucca right on Hollywood Boulevard. There. Right on Hollywood. Hollywood and Whitley pretty yep. much is where it was. Okay. Um, and so, that was... Uh, were you by yourself or did you No, get there roommates? was four of us. Oh, right? my Lord. How many bedrooms? Two? <laughs> Two, yeah. yeah. But fortunately, the guys, um, one of my roommates left who was it sharing my room. Mm. And so once he left, we didn't get another roommate for like a good three months. So I had the whole room to myself. Oh, man. And, then, and no one was going to challenge me on it because <laughs> I just wasn't going to let that happen. Yeah, right. That's <laughs> so hysterical. It worked uh, for a little while, but then eventually... It's not only the places where you are, but the people that you're with as well. Absolutely. And so those people growing up in that college room dormitory type mm-hmm. of scenario uh, yeah. wasn't where it wasn't the people that I really wanted to be hanging around with anymore. I wanted I ha- I had a time limit on me because I have to have a visa to live here, right? Right. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Sorry, excuse my French, and you can still live here. You can say fuck. It's uh, fine. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but it's true. Everybody else can kind of um, even the people that I knew, they were able to go work at a restaurant, go work here, go do. It. If they got fired, it didn't matter. If I get fired, I lose my visa. Hmm. If I no longer work for somebody who helps me out, my vi- I no longer get my visa. I have to leave the country. I don't just have right. to. I don't just have to go and find a new job. I have to go find somebody to responsor my visa. I have to go find somebody to do this to do that pay another fifteen thousand dollars to a lawyer that uh, incorporating everything into it that's insane so i always had a very pressing this is weird i've actually like never done like therapy or anything before so this is almost <laughs> you've <laughs> fallen into my trap <laughs> and yet now you know what the riley round table um, is yeah, Come this on. Is like, yeah this is pretty interesting we'll get um, into other shit don't worry <laughs> but i'm just i'm inter- like legitimately interested because i know a lot about you now now that we sat next to each other yeah, yeah, I mean, we sit yeah. Next to each other and here for everybody well. uh listening at home watching at home yeah uh jack's my uh my what do you call that my desk mate desk neighbor desk mate. Desk yep, neighbor he's like i'm literally here and i can punch him like that and there he is and so and we're right there and it's fun um which i'm happy about because he brings cal in sometimes and so cal gets i'm like cal's (laughs) desk mate then as well which is awesome yeah well cal's the best cal's a superstar of the office (laughs) the collider mascot and everything in between he really is hey look at that you used uh, some of my uh tagline for roundtable um all right learning from the best yeah learn to thank you yeah well please please no (laughs) autographs um so okay you're there you got your apartment one guy moved out but you needed to move on what was the moving on? What was the job? What What are some of the uh, jobs you're doing in this situation? So I first actually, I don't really reveal this often. I first actually got screwed over by a gentleman named Doug Doug Crosgo. Cro- okay. Cosgro. D-O-U-G-C-O-S-G-R-O. If he ever tries to reach out to you, he had a company called Noble Artist. Don't trust him. Oh, um, I like this. Let's so, bring this up. What the oh, f- what, please, I Doug? pray to find this guy again. I pray <laughs> to find this guy. Never seen him since. It drives me mad. Um, so he, obviously, once I was fresh out of school, I needed to do my visa and stuff. Sure. And he had a management company or like an agency type of thing called Noble Artists. Mm-hmm. And so it took my interest. He saw me as a young talent. And I do believe in the beginning stages, he did see me as one because he did have other people working for him and other clients on his Ross stuff. So he seemed legit. So he did. Yeah, he was legit. He, the, the company itself was legit anyways. Um, however, then as things started going on, he was telling me how if he had three grand, he was able to get this visa. Or if he had five grand, he was able to get this. So I believe it was a total of about four grand that he managed to get from us in order to get my visa that then never even came into play. Oh. And then he just fell off the face of the earth type of scenario. So that was the first 
knocked down. But yeah. I'm glad it was the first time. Okay. Hadn't tried anything else, hadn't done anything before. My uh-huh. first time was a fuck up. Right. That so you learned so, from it. Oh, phenomenally valuable. Yeah. Because it gave me my own sense of value as well. I was yeah. like, never, like, I, I still feel disgusted by it. Like, I, I've had girls cheat on me, and I feel still more disgusted by that than the girl cheating on me. Okay. That's how much that really ground, like, that really got to me. And it had never really happened to me or my family before, from what I'm aware. Right. So once that one, once that one happened, it put me in my place. And I was like, cool, now I know what I'm worth. Okay. Um, and then obviously, like that. after that, I went on a small hunt, and then my mum found me uh obviously marky costello who was wonderfully helpful and the most one of the one of the greatest actual teachers for me over the last like three four years yeah i couldn't deny it at all um everything that i really did learn i learned from her whether it was how to do things or how not to do things nice. nobody's perfect and that's the way that you have to l- learn from everybody at the same time um so that's one thing that i couldn't be more grateful for and then i started doing all this on camera stuff blah 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 blah. but that didn't that's not life that's just what i was doing whilst i was here here yeah. i am now it, like I said, it was all pressure. What, is it? what do they say? Pressure makes cream rise to the top or something. One of those stupid expressions. Where yeah. it's like a, and so all the pressure that was on me with the time limit, with my parents' money, with the certain jobs that I had and somebody having to find my sponsor or my visa. I believe that's why you call me an old soul. Yes. Because I, I had to move forward mentally first mm-hmm. so that I could actually... Because I was watching friends around me my age just fall off, having to go home, having to go back to their own country, having to go back to their own state. And I was like... I can't do this. There's, yeah. there's no way I want that to be me. It's listen up, kids. That it, it's so true. You're going to meet a lot of people, especially in this business, in the in, in the entertainment business. You're going to mm-hmm. le- meet a lot of flakes. You're going to oh. meet a lot of people that might steal your money. That, yeah. that are that are doing. They want to use you. They want to step over you, and they want to use you as maybe a, a step ladder to their next thing. I've seen it. It's happened to me. Um, it, it's one of the situations that I don't recommend for everybody. But to the the comment, the old soul. Um, you get it. I feel like you get it. I feel like there's something about you. that's like, there's no time to waste. Like, let's, let's do this. Let's be successful. Yeah. Let's make this happen. And that's why I think I've really gravitated to you. Cause we were sitting there talking podcasts. We were talking life. We were talking movies and William Zabka's right over there. And I'm like, looking at him going, Cobra Kai, man, what's up? Cobra Kai. And I love, <laughs> hey, and I'm wearing, you're, you're wearing the shirt and now. I'm wearing the shirt just randomly worked out like that. So that's, that's. That's great, dude. Well, that's, um, I've had the privilege of being around you, being around Christian, being mm. around Ellis, uh, uh, multiple other older women, beautiful people all around the industry. All I've done, like you say, I'm still very young. I'm 23 years old. I don't like to admit it, but I'll admit it to you. Um, but God, I've I wish learned, I was 23 with, with where you're at and what you know. Yeah, people aren't as lucky as me. People don't yeah. have people like you, like Christian, like everybody in this office, Mark Fernandez, yeah. all, all, everybody that's in this office and everybody that I've met, like Marky, everybody. Um, they were all 10, 5, 10, 15, 20 years older than me. Mm-hmm. So what do, I, what do I think? That I know better than them? Right. No, I know, I know the stuff that I've grown up with and what's current and the people, what they like that are similar to me and similar to my age demographic. But that doesn't, we're, we're not, we don't know what we're talking about. We just know what's happening right now. You also need yeah. to be able to listen to you, to listen to the older generation, the experience, and to be able to intertwine the two. Yes. And that is something that it is that I want to be able to do. I want to be able to take that old model, see this new chaos that's coming up right now, and be able to intertwine them so that they make a nice little, nice little sandwich, a PB&J, as you guys say. I love this. Let's get into that, actually. <laughs> Pour me up. One. Because it's something very interesting. I think you had – when you came into Collider, you had a really great – from what from, from what I can understand and see just on the periphery was your understanding of this space. And maybe not an understanding. You kind of said it's like molding the two, you know. But yeah, it's an evolution. It's, it is. It's an evolution happening right now. I was just talking to a friend who I brought in. He's starting a podcast kind of company himself. Cool. He, he wanted to know some – what do we do here? What is, so I just kind of gave him a little look and – but I kept saying it's like there, there things shift all the time. In your opinion, like, um, and you were at Fandango at, at one point, yeah, I worked right, at Fandango and Rotten Tomatoes for a year as well. And that yeah. was one of the most beneficial experiences of my life, hands down. Getting to work with Eric Davis, Nikki, Scott Rowan, one of the producers, Cookie, one of the producers over there. Um, working with all of them was absolutely phenomenal. And did again, you, did you know Sandro? I got to hang out with Sandra a couple yeah. times. Um, I was actually, I'm so sorry about this. I was at one of the parties once at San Diego Comic Con because I got to host for San Diego Comic Con with uh, right. Nikki there. And I met Sandro and his wife. Uh, we were a bit drunk at one of the bars as an after party. It's Comic Con. And yeah. when it was like, Sandro, this is my wife. And I looked at his wife and I looked back at him and I said, high five, Sandra. <laughs> Only to then get told 
that he was the, He's the, head <laughs> the of VP or whatever on that bed. Whatever. <laughs> VP. <laughs> Over at Fend. So it's like my boss's 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 boss. Yes. And I was just like white the whole <laughs> night. And I never brought it up again. No, never brought it up again because hopefully he got drunk or I, I don't know if he was drinking or not, but hopefully he went and got drunk and forgot it ever happened. I- I'll tell you a little secret about Sandro. I'm sure he was fine because Sandro and I were partying in USC together. Oh, brilliant. I went to USC okay, cool. with Sandro. Oh, so, really? Yeah. He was... Uh, Trojans, right? Yeah, Trojans. He there was a go. good friend of mine. He was in the dorms with me. We kept in touch all the way out. Then he kind of... He dropped off and did his thing and then... We wrote back around and had dinner with him over Fandango stuff. So. Now he's doing very well. And now he's doing yeah, very yeah, well. Doing brilliant. We should reach out to him again. Yeah, we know? should. Because I have that. Uh, take him out. He's a good guy. And yeah. He well, he has, can take us out on that NBC card. <laughs> that's right. He has, a, he has a great sense of humor. So I'm sure, well, as the boss, he might have been like, hey, easy, buddy. Yeah, but, simmer uh, down. <laughs> okay, all right. Dude, let's just drink. Um, okay, but this space is interesting because I don't, I don't even know how to, like, let's, I want to talk about it because in, like, I think it's, I want to. Pull back the veil a little bit on what okay. we what we do. We do videos. We do podcasts. We we do movie commentary. We do it all, right? Yeah. What like what is your opinion of the YouTube space, the podcast space? I mean, it, we can be vague, we can be broad, we can be specific, but you know what are the, what are what do we need to do to succeed? I really like asking you these things because I think you know. <laughs> I, I I mean, it's like yeah. you don't know, <laughs> but I think you have a great idea and you have a twenty three year old view from working at Fandango, from working with Marky, and like, what, what are some of the things you see that, uh, that is just YouTube, making- YouTube wasn't, in my, again, I could be totally wrong, who knows, right. but YouTube, in my opinion, wasn't created for a, a brand like Collider. It wasn't created for any large brand. A YouTube, we're called a content creator because you're a single individual that normally creates content. Right. Hence why all of these largest, most successful YouTube accounts and YouTube uh, content creators and personalities mm-hmm. are individuals. Yeah, their makeup, their gamers, and I mean, if you look at the top ten most recent, uh, the top ten highest paid last year, I believe it's Ryan Toys, who is a seven-year-old kid who just plays with toys. <laughs> Do you want to know Jesus. why that's? Yeah, that, what, but it's so profitable because there's yeah. no overhead there. Right. There's no on a YouTube channel. You can't have the overhead to expense your your channel yeah because everybody in their grandma at the moment it used to be able to do that when not as many people like everybody now has over a million subscribers it's ridiculous everybody right. has over half a million subscribers so everybody has a youtube bigger. channel everybody in their grandma has a youtube channel yeah. now as well so it's just saturating and saturating and saturating mm-hmm. so now these individuals i mean even keemstar who's a gamer he really pissed me off the other day because i saw a tweet i don't think i saved it unfortunately i, I retweeted it mm-hmm. calling him a dickhead because he was like because of the new, this is, I'm quote, like, what's the word when you don't Paraphrasing. quote? Paraphrasing. Thank yeah. you. Um, he was like, because of the new, the new YouTube algorithms, for 10 minutes a day, if I entertain 2 million people, I only get paid $4,000. <laughs> Thanks, new algorithms. I was like, I'm sorry, cuz what? Wait, so you made 4,000 in one day? For 10, not even one day, for 10, 10 minutes, minutes, bro. 2 million people in 10 minutes. For starters, you should feel so privileged. Yes. So privileged that 2 million people actually want to watch you and listen to you do something. You made more than me in the entire month than you did, like, in 10 minutes. Come on. This is insane. 10 minutes I'm a day. I'm paraphrasing, but... But, uh, yeah, exactly. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if so, that, that, But it is, though. That is some people's salary for the month. Absolutely it is. And you're complaining about it being a day's work for 10 minutes? Oh. Like, hold on. So does that... Uh, so those types of things, that just shows, right? As a single person, all he has to do is sit at home and play video games. Yeah. And then on top of that, he doesn't really have much of an overhead besides maybe fitting out his streaming room. But majority of the times, all these gamers get stuff sent to them for their streaming they, rooms yeah, to play. Sure. And if you're getting 2 million views in 10 minutes, you're getting free stuff sent to you. I don't care who you are. I, I do this for Collider. Right. Where we have a certain amount of views. We're able to get stuff sent to us because right. that's how the industry is working currently. So yeah. don't go telling me that you have to pay for everything. Right. So when I see stuff like that, that kind of represents what YouTube's become. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it absolutely does. And it, that's why, it, yeah, I don't believe it's for something... To entertain and as a marketing tool, mm-hmm. I think it's wonderful to give... It's like a TV show, isn't it? It's like the TV of the internet to a point. It is. So that's why in that mannerism, I think it's very handy and I think it's very useful and I think it's one of the better things we've actually ever had. Mm-hmm. But that 15-second ad tide at the beginning of your video... Mm-hmm. Tired of paying so much money for that. How many people actually sit there and go, yeah, I'm going to buy Tired now? Or how many psychological people are then going to go, ooh, I'm going to completely change up my laundry detergent and now start using Tide? Because that's what it used to be. It used to be subliminal advertising. Right, right. And now we don't fall for subliminal advertising. We're like, well, that was dumb. <laughs> 
Because it's true. That's what the audience is like now. You can, uh, these kids can smell bullshit from a mile away. Yeah, a mile they can, away. They, oh God, Authenticity they really is so key. Yeah. And uh, I think that's why I don't think you can be as authentic on YouTube anymore. It's hard, man. Yeah. I mean, I, I was shocked as, as anyone when I noticed like the kind of the influx of different creators, different channels. My own uh, step nephew, uh, I'm going to bring him on the show, uh, is, is known on YouTube as Bricky. And okay. uh, I, have you heard of Bricky? No, I have not. Uh, I'll show you him off air. He's uh, so my dad remarries. Okay. She has a daughter and uh, she gets married when I'm still when we when they got married. My dad and Adele, my mom and stepdad uh sorry reverse other way around yeah other way got around. You. um i got to know kim and then kim had taylor kid boy and when he was like five he was like all in my grill like star wars and like oh my god this he's a dork he's a geek he's all of that i love him to death about two years ago his dad is like he's doing a youtube channel and i went Okay. Here we go. More competition for you, Riley. Well, first I did this. I went, oh, really? Oh, okay. That's nice. Believe me. I've never, like, at one point I, I entertained the idea of a YouTube channel. It's not for me. Oh, I, I feel, like yeah, doing it I here. Agree. But um, then I'm like, oh, great. You know, oh, it's like, how many subscribers do you have? He's like, I have 100,000. I went, what? What happened? Wait a minute. Now he's like at 500. He's got promotions he's as an individual right? it's one person yeah. yeah bought a house all these different things and how old is this kid he's like he's like your age oh no he's he's younger probably a little bit younger yeah, he's younger he's probably like 18 or 19 now Jesus. but i am going to get him on on the show i i we we were hanging out christmas eve and and believe me i i'll make fun of him to his face but i love him to death yeah i love what he does i think he he's got a great personality but it really, clearly you're not the only one who does 500,000 other people whoever many subscribers he's got believes that he does as well he, and that's the important thing yeah having it, an authentic engaging personality that people can actually relate to not is, get sold shit anymore yes he is absolutely authentic if he's anything yeah he is authentic he always has been and I think that's what people like about him and he's doing very well and so uh, that's a tease for you I will I will get uh, Taylor on Bricky That'd Ricky. be awesome. You'll have to show me his stuff afterwards. I will. I wanted to, at one point, just get him up here to, to meet everybody because he is in the space and he's for video games. So, be um, brilliant. Well, uh, we've got Collider Games. Don't be sure. I'm just yeah, kidding. and with Collider Games here <laughs> on the Collider Podcast One Network. Uh, but that, that was interesting to me. And then it's, it's the so many different YouTube channels that I was wondering um, with – I've heard terms like the algorithm changed. Like your story yeah. with, you know, $4,000 in 10 minutes guy. The way that you get to see each other's or the way that YouTube pretty much releases its content and the way that people are able to see your content. Mm -hmm. It's 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 very interesting to me because at one point I thought there were people that were doing very well. There was a different algorithm. I don't know these things, but I want to go into the YouTube space and how it like we've lost a We've yeah. lost a, a ton of places. Yeah. You know, what is that? In your opinion, what is that? How did Defy do that? Is it because the algorithm change? Is it because there's a million YouTube channels and the overhead at Defy is so much? That's what my belief is on everything. Yeah. Over uh, An overhead spend for a YouTube channel can't be as high as what it is because, like I said, I mean, you just look at the base. I'm not a genius about it. I don't, I'm yeah. not Rain Man when it comes down to the numbers. But you can just, like I said, if you've got the top 10 YouTube personalities and not a single one of those is a brand and every single one, a top 10 earning YouTube personalities mm -hmm. and amount of subscribers as well. Not a single one of those is a brand. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's even the same as Instagram. Mm -hmm. The Rock, okay, The Rock is a brand within himself, right? But sure. he's not a collider. He's not a, 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 a whatever. Right. The, the H&M, or, yeah. a Defy, a, a brand in total, like a company. Yeah. And, so, and same as all larger Instagram accounts as well. They're the individuals because that way there is – the only thing you've got to pay for is yourself. And the only thing you've yeah. got to pay for is the stuff that you do. Yeah. It's how a lot of these – even on Instagram when you see people that are like traveling around the world, mm -hmm. they – they're traveling themselves around the world. What they choose to do with it, mm -hmm. which is to create a traveling blog. Mm. If they choose to do that and then they capture the way that an audience wants to look at it because Instagram's an aesthetic platform. So mm -hmm. anything that you look at, you have to be able to immediately want to make somebody hit that follow button because your feed is so pretty. That doesn't mean that they're getting flown around the world. They're flying themselves around the world on their own time and dime. Okay. But they're not flying a whole company around the world. 
Right. So they go to fly one, one person. You go to Thailand, it costs uh, nothing, but you can get the most beautiful shots in Thailand yep. and go across all the islands, and then suddenly you become this woman that everybody, or this, this influencer that other girls aspire to want to be one day, mm -hmm. which is to go and travel around as well. Yeah. So my biggest thing is always looking at your overheads and how much something is going to cost you to make it happen. Right. And now YouTube doesn't sell ads the way that it used to anymore. Yeah. You don't make as much money as what people w used to be making on ads, hence why you see people complaining about making $4,000 a day. <laughs> And you've got to think about how quickly that's now changed. Yeah. That's the one thing that people don't realize as well is that things are rapidly um, changing. Yeah, they like are. They're exponentially evolving right. as well. This Keemstar hasn't been a... Uh, he's probably, he was a Twitch personality for a little while, but has only been massively on YouTube big since the game and the stuff started coming around. So it's, a couple it's years, like, yeah, right? a couple, three, four years that he's really been big. Now he's complaining about making $4,000 a day. Whew. How much were you making before the damn algorithms yes, changed, Yes, that's what I was wondering. 10000 Get my point? Yeah. So that it, that's why when we say this, everything's an evol uh, nothing's new. Everything's just an evolution. It's a Pokemon. We started as Pikachu, and now we're Raichu. We started as Char uh, Charmander, and now we're Charizard. Like, and then it goes on and on and on and on and on, of course. Yeah. So that's where YouTube is at the moment. And it's in, I, I believe, personally... It's in the trimming the fat stage. Mm. It's in the mm. stage of where it's like, we need to thin all this shit down yeah. so that the real content creators can can still survive and stay up there and be worth Rise what they're making. The top, like so PewDiePie is, yeah, like yeah. laughing to his laughing to his bank account. So they've got the 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 stars that are still handling, but then the defiers are falling off. The whoever are then falling off because they just can't keep up with the fact that they used to be making ten thousand dollars a day and now they're only making four thousand dollars right? a day. Can you imagine that? Let's let's say Defy. Uh, and I don't mean to single out Defy because we have a lot of friends that lost jobs mm. because of this. And and but it sucked terribly. It's, it sucks terribly, but it's it's just an example that is so right in our face. But you take an overhead. You say just say Defy, and they have X amount of employees. They have rentals. They have equipment. They have all these different things. And then you take sixty percent off of that. You know, from ten thousand to four thousand. I'm just using oh, the number. Oh, the price. Yeah, the price. exactly. You're losing sixty percent because of the different in the in the algorithm. You're fucked. You're losing your business. You're, you are closing you, down. You are closing down. That means, and we saw it coming because I know Defy at one point they downsized, so a yep. lot of people lost so their losing jobs. jobs. Yep, and then that's the writing on the wall a little bit there. But but that's why I love Collider because Collider is not only trying to base themselves off of a YouTube channel. Just because uh, just because we have a YouTube channel, and people think we get well. You guys, I'm obviously this is the first besides English Premier League. I'm very rarely on camera here, but because yeah. they think that you guys talk about Disney. Um, in, a, in a, a light sometimes they're like oh you guys are Disney shields you get paid by Disney believe us if we got paid by Disney we would have the most beautiful building we'd have the most beautiful studios because Disney shit money yeah. we would believe us we would love to get paid by Disney we please would it would make my job so much please, easier here. Just, you have no idea just if look in the knows, camera I'll look in the camera Disney just pay, we, us. pay us pay we, us we'll, we'll please, take we'll it. it we'll, we'll take um, your money to like your Star Wars <laughs> <laughs> but that's that, see that's but what people that, keep calling us out for. People think that that's the case. Yeah, and it's not. It is. The, yeah, uh, and you, you preach it, brother. <laughs> you have it, no it idea. Because it I makes try, me laugh too. Yeah, it, I try and go on Twitter when they call us out, and I'll try and message people. They'll be like, "Who are you?" I'll be like, "Look, I work at Collider. Believe me, I wish we were getting paid." But like, I'll slide in their messages and like their DMs and stuff, and be like, "That's just not the case," because YouTube doesn't want you to be doing that type of stuff anymore. Now it truly is just a marketing tool where it's like, look. It's the same as TV. When you watch TV, you have to watch an advert every seven minutes or so. They play right. four adverts throughout the half an hour show or eight adverts through the hour show, whatever it is. What YouTube is unfortunately almost becoming a similar type of thing, but with a, a, a more authentic and a more organic type of advertisement instead. Mm -hmm. And we, well, it already became that. Yeah. And now we can see again that that's not working again because the audience has evolved again. What yeah. people have to realize is it's not only the technology that's evolving, but it's our audience that's evolving as well. It's such a great point because I want to go into podcasts yeah. because I think there was a pivot here yeah. with the podcasts and something I'm very proud of and so to be a part of this company. Correct. And, you know, it's, so, yeah. it's uh, yep, let's do it. Um, because the podcast network You ain't got to do a movie talk, right? I'm not doing movie talk. <laughs> nope. Let's do this. I got and I got a business Ooh. meeting up the up the street where uh, we're, we're going to talk some uh, screenwriting uh, in a little bit. So, psh, oh, your ideas is, will be a flowing. This is going to be good. I just spilled um, a bit, my bad. That's fine. Um, because the podcast network, then we launched. You know, back in June. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, back June last year. Doing Major. pretty well. Yeah, it's doing really well for you. Doing really well. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, I was talking about this because you think about the technology, you think about 
you know, the algorithm changing, sure. But you, you mentioned something. The audience is changing. And think about it this way. The how easy is it, right, to go put in your headphones, boop, hit the button, podcast is playing, and you go about your day. You either get in your car, you go to the gym, you do some laundry, you're walking. I only listen to podcasts yep. now. It makes a ton of sense to me that podcasts are doing well. And Even not radio just, stations it, themselves, they do, they do the radio station sure. for four hours in the morning, right. but then they go and release their podcast the next, or later yes. on that evening or the next day. You know why? Because the radio station is it's a set only, time. It's this time. We want it on demand. We've got Amazon Prime. I want it right now on toilet. Right. I, you're sitting on the toilet and you've realized you've run out of toilet paper. You can order Amazon Prime and it'll be there by the time you finish taking a dump. Yeah. Like, <laughs> That is how on demand we want everything to be. And, and that's, that's what people want. Correct. It's easy. Technology was invented. The use of technology, they want things to make it easy on things. Like I can go, Alexa, hey, order me. Some, I want to see Bumblebee at 7 o'clock at the Grove. Buy me tickets. Buy me tickets. I link to my Adam tickets or whatever the hell they want me to do. Yep. And I'm like, there it is. Okay, that's easy. Okay, Mark. Your yeah. tickets are bored for 7 p.m. Oh, usually I get this from Alexa. I'm sorry, I can't do that right now. <laughs> and I'm like, why not? My mom got my dad one for Christmas and watching my yeah. old man deal with it was hilarious. Oh, even me as well. I was like, Alexa, Alexa. <laughs> you just get angry at her, don't you? You get so angry. Sometimes we... Because you can say, Alexa, turn down the volume, and it'll do it. But sometimes yeah. for some reason we, sure. we say, turn it down. And she, I'm sorry, which device? I was like, come on. It's, yourself. You know which yourself. one it is. Turn yourself down. <laughs> turn yourself down. <laughs> you jerk. <laughs> you... Um, <laughs> Uh, but I love. But uh, you know, technology is supposed to make it happen, right? It's supposed to make everything easier. And I th it occurred to me as like the audience has changed for podcasts. So, what what is the future in your opinion of podcasts? Like, is it going to continue? Because there is like, I'm a true crime guy. I love my true crime podcasts, and there are like podcasts out there that I listen to a lot that they're now combining com uh, podcasts together. Yeah. You know, you're, you have one true crime podcast that pairs up with another, and then they're doing this special one, and people are losing their mind over it. But that's just one thing. And that's because they're giving the audience what they want though, at the same time. Right. So when you you just – all you have to do is look at what it is that people are referring to. If you – like they say, you throw a bunch of shit at the wall when you see what sticks. Yeah. I don't love that expression mm -hmm. because obviously it sounds a lot worse when we do it that way. I know this is my fault. I, I know. I don't want it to no, you're stain on it. We're, you know, everybody right, listening right at home. We're wine. We're winos now. We're drinking yeah, we wine, are, and, and, we, and we. I had Jack spilled wine. As and well. Jack Wait, spilled wine. Nah, idea. it's fine. No, oh, like a, oh, I see what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Just put it there. Just put it anyway. <laughs> Chris is gonna kill me. This is my one of my favorite episodes happening right now because <laughs> when Jack said, "Let's drink some wine," I'm like, <laughs> "Why not? Come on, dude. We just not? got back. It's the New Year. It's, yeah, it's, it's a New Year. Night. This is what we always do as well. Whenever we have a nice glass of wine together, often when we hang out, or is it? Uh, well, it's normally. Something. It's probably whiskey. It's normally, usually, so, yeah, it's but whiskey. the wine. Have you been could, wine tasting? I haven't. This is yeah. something that I want to do really badly. I, you're we a big go. wine guy. We, I'll that's what you. I'm saying. This is what I want to do. We need to have like a boys' day. Me, you, Makuga. Yes. And we all get dressed up super fancy. We oh go my wine god! Tasting. Wine tasting. It's two hours up the coast. I did Malibu wines, but I didn't do the Malibu's actual. Wines. I didn't do the it's actual great. tasting though. Oh, okay. I just went. So you do like the safari thing before, yeah. but I didn't get to the safari thing. So they went and did the safari thing. I just went to the bar and just ordered because you can only buy their wines, can't right, you? Right, right. So I just got one of the bottles of red, one of the bottles of white, and then sat there and enjoyed myself at like twelve o'clock midday. It's it was the, gorgeous. The best thing to do is get up in the morning at like seven, eight on a Saturday. Get to wine country by noon, and then you got the entire day in front of you. You're in the sun, the sun, <sighs> the the wine country. The you're on little and the whatever and the you, yeah. You feel you're like on you're little out of everything. cottage roads, and you're like, what's that winery? I don't know. Who cares? It looks nice. You stop in. You put. They pour you the wine to taste. You pay ten bucks for a couple tastings. Ridiculous, isn't it? Or a couple tastings. Ten bucks will get you like five tastes. <sighs> And you're sitting there with people, and more people come. I've met so many people just sitting there just talking. Just on the wine tasting. Like I was sitting there talking uh, one day. We we're just sitting there, and he's like, you know, what are you doing? I'm like, I do this and do that. What do you do? He's like, well, I'm a drone, uh, professional drone flyer. So in other words, I'm like, good what? at video games. Yes, and I'm like, <laughs> what? And he pulls out his phone. He shows me footage. He bit like he's hired by Microsoft, AT and He's hired by all these big, huge corporate companies when they're building these buildings all over the world. 
he launches his drone and flies around it to give him schematics. To give him a and better so, view and everything. It's insane. But seeing that again. And this guy's like, can I buy you a tasty? And I'm like, yes, yes you, you can. can. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to that, sir. I love it. Well, okay, back to podcasts because the podcasts is, are, are very interesting. So is that the is the is podcasts the future over YouTube, in your opinion? Uh, over YouTube, no, because I still think people are visu visually stimulated. Yeah, it's so YouTube TV. is still going to visually stimulate you. Yeah. There's still TV. I don't. B I believe that cable TV no is no really going to longer be a thing. You don't have a oh, cable God, box no. anymore and stuff like that. I cut. That's what I'm saying. Everybody's cutting. So yeah. like, I believe a lot of like if you try and call time on the cable spectrum and stuff like that now, you can't even get a new box because yeah. they're not making new cable boxes no. anymore because they just uh, they know the writing's useless. on the wall. Yeah, yeah. So instead, they're trying to create like YouTube TV or like a, a, a Hulu TV or like a Spectrum TV. Well, yeah, that's what Spectrum com, did. Dot com. Dot com. Right, Spectrum, I cut it, and because they're ridiculous, and they're charging me all this money for a box and the internet it's and all this. It's 200 bucks a month for yes. my internet and my cable. It's driving me insane. And I'm gonna, I'm like, I, why have I not cut it yet? I don't no, know. No, and I get I get my internet for 50, and then I get my streaming for like 50. Yeah. And I've already saved $85. And I'm like, so Spectrum, what are you doing? So now they are doing what these other companies are doing. So yeah, right. And that's why everybody's got their dot coms at the moment as well. Because yeah. like you say, the internet was supposed to be, YouTube was supposed to be the TV of the internet, but instead it was everybody being able, it was the, the public diary of the internet almost. Right. Like the public visual diary of the internet that everybody got to have a view on everybody's life. Yeah. So now podcasts and the reason I love podcasts, I, I mean, I, I'm not even a podcaster, you know, you're the yeah. podcaster, the, the other gents and the other personalities in here are the podcaster. Sure. Um, but the reason I like it so much is because it, it gives people a chance to listen to something. And I don't think people have been listening that often because when you're watching something, you often get visually distracted by stuff. Mm. When you are watching it, if the movie's not that great, the script's not that good, but mm. the action's great, the general audience is going to love the film because the action was great. Yeah. I'm one of those people. Right. If I'm watching something and it sounds really good, but I'm watching it and it's boring, I would rather not see it. I'd rather just listen to it and then let that great story take me on a trip, take yeah. me on a trip instead, and vice versa. If I just see something that's amazing on screen, don't say anything. Give me some cool music in the background whilst this giant action scene's going down. Sure. So that's where I believe the the, the difference is between the two, a visual stimulant and a, a, an audible stimulant. Yeah. That's what podcasts are. Mm -hmm. Podcasts is a place where you can, you can have a listen and you can relax and you can kind of create your own and get lost within yourself and get lost with you do you have these conversations with people right and be able to just sit in there and be like let me learn a little bit let me hear about this person let me not worry about my day for a second right let me escape from my day for a second and i'm sure yeah. that's what a lot of people like to do with you a lot of people have a big stressful day not people get a lot of people don't have the privilege that we have to work at an amazing platform like this this is very true somebody's coming home from their nine to nine not even their nine to five they're nine to nine and all they want to do on their way home is listen to half an hour an hour of riley round table yeah I in their so. car on their way yeah. home being stuck in traffic like that's their release. That's their that's their oh, at the end of the day. You and know, I believe so that's funny. what a podcast does best. Yeah. I, I couldn't put it better myself. I do that on the way to work. I, I literally have moments where I go, I, I'm I can't wait to put on this podcast on my way to work just because it, it it's it's now become something that starts my day. Yeah. Where it's like yeah. I have to have that. And I, and I hooked up one it's it's the daily, it's the New York Times. Yeah, the just, daily. Yeah. The daily's great. It's my news, it's my politics, it's all this stuff that keeps me informed. I like it, I like the opinions, all these kind of stuff. I connected it to my Alexa, and so I do Newsflash Alexa. In the morning. Yeah, in the yeah, morning, yeah, yeah. it gives me the news. But this one, they they rolled that one. I'm like, no, 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 Alexa, skip. That's for my drive. That's for my, oh, That's for my drive. Playing the daily. Yeah, because I'll start playing that. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm going to save that thing. one. Exactly. And, that, and like you say, the, you said it earlier, on demand. Like you said it when... Uh, can't do live TV because, or when we do a live radio show or yeah. a live morning radio show, yeah, not, but not everybody's traveling to work at that time. No, yeah, I mean, that was something I loved listening to sports radio as well. And like Colin Cowherd is some one of my favorites. And, uh, you know, whether or not you like him or not, you know, he's controversial sometimes. I like that. He wasn't playing by the time I got to work. He yeah. starts at nine, I'm rolling in at nine. Yeah. So I'm rolling in at 8.30 most times. So when when that's happening, I'm like, Guess what? He drops it on iHeartRadio app. I can listen to that whenever I want. Or now he's on his his podcast, uh, his own app, which I use. 
So I do the same with the Woody show. I used to listen because I used to have an hour and a half drive to work when I was yeah. working over on the west side because traffic in LA sucks. In case you didn't know, oh, I'm sure everybody does. Yeah, everybody and so should know. I'd, yeah. I'd wake up in the morning, I'd put it on, and mm-hmm. then once I got into my car, the Bluetooth would connect and then it would come from my Bluetooth. I wouldn't even listen to the radio one anymore. Wow. I would use the podcast even though it was on at the same time. I was in the car whilst the radio station was on. I would still use the podcast through the Bluetooth instead. <laughs> yes, I understand. I don't That's... know why I did it. Yeah, because I just got into the routine of doing it. But that, and I guess it was because of the fact that I knew that I could pause it if I wanted to or I could stop it if I wanted to it's great that was the other different part about it as well yeah and so you can't pause live radio can't pause live radio no you can't you can pause your podcast and go I'll pick this up I'll pick that up in a minute yeah it's so great I mean that's that's why I love podcasts. That's why I, I see an uptick, maybe you know. Uh, look, I don't even like the fact that we have to sell ads on podcasts. I hate advertisements. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Yeah. That we have to try and sell. Like halfway through this, there'll probably be some read for something. <laughs> that fortunately, we are now getting to the point of where we can choose our reads. Yeah, we can choose the stuff that we want to advertise because we know that it will be slightly more beneficial towards our audience. Yeah. I'm waiting for that. It's not that it's more beneficial toward our audience. That's what the advertisers think. It's no. What will our audience actually care about? Yeah. What do they care about Mark Riley talking to them about? They know you're a wine lover. They know you're this. So let's find something that your audience are already correlating and connecting to you on. Yeah. Let's then actually give you an authentic, instead of trying to get erectile fucking dysfunction pills. <laughs> it's like, Riley doesn't need those, so Riley's not going to advertise them. Riley hasn't used those, so Riley's not going to advertise yeah, them. Yeah, I'm sorry. You hey, guys, it's Riley. If you like the Riley Roundtable, <laughs> you love the Roundtable erectile dysfunction pill. You can't get it up at night. Don't feel manly. Don't worry. We got you covered. One pill in the morning, one pill at night, and you're going to feel just fine. Just <laughs> type in erectile dysfunction, but make sure you clear your browser history. Uh-oh. You don't want your wife seeing that shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, what, I, I totally I don't agree. mean to be rude, Riley, but I'm not going to buy ED pills off of you. No. no I'm not going and to. I, I totally Roker, agree. Roker, on the other hand. <laughs> see, now if Roker did it, maybe then I'll look at getting myself a set. But... <laughs> How, I would when buy does from this him? come yeah, out? I <laughs> what day do I need to know to yeah, run away? <laughs> uh, that'd be tomorrow. Just uh, be sure to run away. <laughs> I'm sure he's his his ear is at the door I give right him now. I'm so sure. Shit, I feel terrible I, on Twitter on everything. I love I love your dynamic. I mean, that's it's fantastic. Oh, but I love Roko. You, you make uh, I love Roko. He's one of my favorite people, of course. Um, but you make a good point. Yeah, we we have certain sponsorships that we enjoy doing, and there's some that are, you we know, endure. Yeah, we endure, yeah. and that's perfect. But you picked up on something. You did something that I that I really want to talk about, which is um, you know we care about our audience. Yeah. Like that's so important to mention. I really want to focus on that because we're in a very weird time in our society now on Twitter, at least fandom. You know the shit with like I can't say. I like The Last Jedi without getting killed or you know, whatever killed uh, without Rip- getting, you know, yeah. something. And uh, which, by the way, I was uh, I was nominated for the Disney Shill Award. I don't know if you saw that. So I'm really hoping <laughs> didn't like Solo that much. So I was really thinking that might take me out of the game. We're going to win uh, it. We're going to win it. We got a winner. So Biggest let's Disney hope. Show. Uh, hoping, oh God, I'll put that right on my toilet. Um, <laughs> but but it's important, I think, to mention because sometimes you know, viewers with Collider podcasts, you know, what have you, they can go, oh, look at this damn sponsorship. And, you know, first I want them to know it's like that helps keep us going. Correct. It it really does. Yeah. So, you know, just know. It's a large help for the ability for the brand and everything to move forward, of course, because you got right. you got to make money. Everybody needs to make we money. We got to make money. We got to do our thing. Um, but we do, like, with an okay. audience, it's perfect. It's perfect. We're here. Everybody wins, but it's that. What do you What do you make of this? The the audience. What do you make of like? You see the Twitter. You see the, they're the most important thing out there. No matter absolutely. what's going on. What do you make of like sometimes when there's pushback? Whether if you don't like a DC movie, you don't like a Star Wars movie. You like a Star Wars movie. You like a DC movie, and there's pushback. And do do you ever in your mind? Yeah, you don't care, do you? If like, people can say what? Well, it, it, yeah. If somebody's trying to tell me off for my own opinion then you're the problem, not me. Mm-hmm. Like, Roker came in and he loved Mary Poppins. I told him he was an idiot. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah. I'm not going to, oh, your but opinion but, is wrong? No. But no. you two have a rapport. You yeah, are friends. Yeah, sure. We're so, friends as well. Even and, if we weren't friends, though. I'm not, not like, an opinion, there's a difference between an opinion and then crossing the line, right? Mm-hmm. So an opinion saying that I don't like a film or that this was my favorite film of the year, 
that 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 it doesn't affect me. If yeah. you're like, oh, my opinion is that killing people is okay, then I'll say something, right? Because that's an issue. Yeah. The, the whole the, the banter and the back and forth and the oh I hate you because you like the last Jedi I, I hate you people are going to kill me for this I didn't even dislike Solo I kind of enjoyed Solo do you want to know why because I wasn't I didn't grow up a Star Wars fan yeah. you got to remember the last Star Wars film came out well the original three that everybody loves right the three that are supposed to be Star Wars films right right the original trilogy the original trilogy they were made ten years before I was born if not more than that I think. Um, yeah, well, excuse my release dates. I'm not Scott Mance. Um, well, the last Bateman. original uh, trilogy Star Wars movie, Return of the Jedi, 1983. Oh, there you go. It was almost 12 years before I was born. Perfect. There it so, is. So you know what I'm saying? So those so you were the never pre- things that I grew up with. But then going to the movies and learning my love of movies and then my next films to come out were the original, the, then the next three Star the Wars prequels. films. Yeah. I did not like them. People hate me for liking Jar Jar Binks. I love Jar Jar Binks. I thought he was amazing. And people hate me consistently for it. But you want to know what? I don't care if you hate me because it's something that I like. Americans like peanut butter and jelly on toast. I think you're fucking crazy for that. <laughs> but I'm not going to tell you, like, I'm not I'm not going to start a Twitter war over it against America because they like PB&Js. <laughs> it's such so an the, interesting thing. They can have, the audience gets to have their fun. The audience gets to battle with Roka, gets to battle with Perry. They they shouldn't take it to heart. And right. of course it must be so easy to. I'm not, I'm not a big Twitter guy, so I don't have a huge Twitter and not interested in it either. So I don't get the beration of what these guys probably do get by these massive fandoms yeah it, but it shows passion yes and i love passion i yeah. think passion is the root of all potential as well if you're passionate about something you can be you have a great potential of being able to achieve in it so if these people were passionate and positive about what it is that they believe in yeah i will 100 agree with them and i will not tell them that they're wrong yeah because nobody's opinion like i say until it passes that threshold nobody's opinion can truly be wrong no, that's how it's I look. It's subjective. It's exactly. always subjective. Yeah. Some like, like best like Citizen Kane. They call it the best movie of all time, the greatest movie of all time. I've seen that movie. I haven't. It's fine. Get, why would I have, see? And that's the difference in the audience now as well. I can promise you, a lot of people who are watching this show mm-hmm. and listen to you mm-hmm. will c- can't believe that I've never seen Citizen Kane before. Yeah. Do you reckon Dorian seen Citizen Kane? No, God, no. Get my point. Do you reckon any, I can, I mean, even with Bird Box coming out now, mm-hmm. people are making the joke about it saying, oh, this lady looks like Michael Jackson. Do you know what lady they're talking about? Sandra Bullock. Oh, God. The new, get, see that, I that must did. pain I'm, you inside. Yes, I'm doing the, I'm doing the, you know, whenever, whenever the scientist <laughs> learns that an alien invasion is happening, they're like, what? What? <laughs> yes. <laughs> People didn't know who Sandra Bullock was. Well, in my, I mean, from Miss Congeniality to everything else that she'd done, even to the heat with Melissa McCarthy, she is Sandra Bullock, not the lady who looks like Michael Jackson. So that just shows how phenomenally different and advanced and evolving that the, the audience, audience is. is at the moment. And you have to be able to play yeah. to all of them. I'm going to need a minute. Could you imagine that? Can you when imagine? I read that, dude, I died. Uh. I died. <laughs> Uh, and even I, I mean, I, like I said, I'm not the oldest or most knowledgeable person in the movie industry. Nowhere near it. Nowhere near, not even, I mean, I'm probably the least knowledgeable in this office when it comes down to it. Well, but I know who Sandra Bullock is. <laughs> yes, you do. No, who Sandra Bullock is. Well, the point here, though, which I like, is that the audience is important and you're going to have to keep pivoting to... You've got to keep up with them. You've got to evolve yes, with them. Yes, and I try and I do and uh, I like to think I do. Um, and I love it. I love the audiences and I love... I don't like it and I've said it, God... So many times about on the Riley Roundtable, I talked to Roca about the whole Aquaman debacle when they're ye- when they're yelling at uh, the Roca and Perry for not liking the movie. I'm like, you know, and he, it doesn't bother him. I mean, if it, it it lands a little bit, it started it landed it started landing with me a little bit. But I got to tell you, when I turned a corner, was I mentioned that Disney shill thing? Yeah. I laughed my motherfucking ass off. I saw that thing, and this guy t- tagged me. I won't even say who it is. I don't give a shit. And I'm just like, <laughs> just this guy spent his holiday building Berating this, doing you. this. Like, not only me, but like so many other people in the Star Wars Are you space. talking about the video, Film Gob? No, oh, no. Up. I don't care. No, oh. not, not even Film Gob. Oh, yeah, Film Gob, yeah. Well, They're, I tweeted him as well. I was like, dude, you, you got to understand that all you've done is taken a few people's opinions and then said that Collider are Disney shills. I'm like, Dorian said on three different occasions that Dorian was a big fan of Aquaman. He's like, well, this wasn't about Dorian. I was, he'd have been in the video. I'm yeah. like... Oh, he said, oh, yeah. But 
But you, okay, so that's why I say, I say I'm not mad, dude. Like I get what you're coming at, and you have every right to. Who am I to tell you that you can't create this video? Right. But don't say don't say Collider, because yeah. Collider aren't. You can be a Disney show, Mark. Roker can be a Disney show because he likes to and playing drums at the end of us and, <laughs> and, and, and Man and the Wasp number two. I you got the individuals can be the Disney shows, but don't. That's that's the thing that I dislike. That's when it hurts. Sometimes. That's when it hurts. It can hurt the brand. Yeah, Steve, when you yeah. take multiple people, when you take a few people that are from it and then include them and say that they're sure you guys are representing Collider, mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean that your opinions speak on Collider's behalf. No, it means that you're apart, Roker's apart, Dorian's apart, Christian's apart, Perry's apart, etc., etc., etc. Yeah. So. That's that's my one and only issue with the audience. When they take something, they don't pay attention to everything else that goes on and then creates a video like that. Mm-hmm. And that's why I'll reach out and say, like, don't say Collider. Say, like you said, he called out John Campier individually, but he didn't call out his show that he now does with Robert Meyer Burnett or whatever it was. Right. So if you're going to call out an individual or if you're going to want to call somebody out, call that person out. I love calling people out. You know that. I do oh, it yeah. here all the time. I it all the time. As an individual. But I'll never throw a whole brand under a bus because of one or two representations of something. It's a great point. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I've yeah, those guys have come after. It's like, it's it's so hilarious, though. It's like, because they'll call me a Disney show. And then one of them was like, I, I did a show all on Man of Steel, which is in the DC film I universe. love Man of Steel. I love Man It's love my favorite. Michael Shannon. I'm a Michael Shannon bitch. I love Michael Shannon. I think he's absolutely phenomenal. He's Ph- phenom- phenomenal. 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 <laughs> but no, and I had a guy come after and he goes, oh, I didn't. I didn't know you liked Man of Steel. Oh, I'm so sorry. And I was like... He didn't know that you liked Man of Steel. Yeah. He thought I was a Disney shill. The and guy with the Superman tattoo on his shoulder thought t- that you yeah. didn't like Man of Steel. The guy with the Superman tattoo. And who actually... And take out, take out Justice... I hated Justice League. Justice League was a, just a mess for me. I just... And See, now, you know I why? I didn't hate Justice League. Because I hated Justice League because they fucked up Superman's rebirth. They, they screwed it up, man. You had the death of Superman storyline to mine from, and they did jack shit with it. But whatever. They just electrocuted him and re- defibrillated, defibrillated yeah. him. And it was like, oh, no, I'm alive. No, but Man of Steel, when the first five minutes of Man of Steel opened, I was like, because I, I grew up with the 1978 Donner version. I love it. It's, it's my favorite. It's my favorite superhero movie because it just encapsulates a lot about me. Growing nice. up, Superman, all these different things. When Man of Steel starts rolling, I'm like... Whoa, music, Hans Zimmer's score comes in. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I This is a different Krypton. This is, wait, oh. It's a beautiful I'm film. in. Yeah. I'm in. I loved it. I like Batman v Superman. So I say a few of those things. And the fan, and this is why I'm talking about the audience. I'm talking all the facets yeah. of the audience. I get a guy come in and go, I had no idea. And I'm like, yeah, because a lot of times with these channels that maybe want to call Collider shills or throw us under the bus, call me a shill or whatever – they're doing flybys. It's like they don't check they see out an everything. episode or they a part see, of an episode. And they see a title. The title sometimes. Oh, boy, Nelly. They can see a title. And that's they're not even listening or watching the episode. They're no. reacting off the title. Yep. And they're going all in. I mean, yeah, nominated for the Disney Shill Award. Guess that's I didn't see my, di- didn't. I guess I didn't see my review for Ant-Man and the Wasp and Solo. I didn't like the movies. I thought, I mean, there are wonderful moments. That's what I want to start doing. I want to start creating videos of Collider where we're cussing out Disney and the Disney films and giving our own opinions. I'm not going to say cuss them out because we don't cuss them out. We give no, our no, honest no. opinions yeah. upon a- other Disney things as well. And then tag all these people in it and be like, explain. Mm-hmm. How are we? How it? But again, still, like I said, I say this. We can moan about this guy as much as we like, but... They are the most important thing that matters when it comes to any brand or any content creator, no matter sure. what, because you would not be where you are without your audience. Collider would not be where it is now without its audience. PewDiePie, Ninja, all of these massive streamers at the moment as well, Hudder Beauty, they would not be where they were without that one specific thing, yeah. which is their audience. Yeah. And so that's why you always have to take them into consideration. And if they're growing and they are asking you to grow and you refuse to grow, they will move on. Yeah, there are other people around. They will break up with you. They will leave yeah. a note on your pillow next to you in the next morning with a glass of orange juice, and you'll never see them again. <laughs> like they will go and find somebody else because there's a hundred million people that are talking about movies right now. Yeah, that yeah. anybody you can go to anywhere. You can Google "tell me about a movie" and a hundred million things will pop up. Oh God! We yeah. have to make sure that we're giving our audience and the new audiences what it is that they want, so that they choose to come to us. Yeah, because they have the choice. They have a TV remote. It's called Google. <laughs> that is such. 
My God, that is my favorite thing I've, I've heard you say. The Google is the remote. Yeah, it's their TV remote. They get to choose whatever it is that they want to watch in that moment in time. So you have to make sure that they're typing in Mark Riley Roundtable, yeah. uh, Riley Roundtable with Mark sure. Riley, or yeah. Collider, or yeah. Collider Podcast, or whatever it is. You have to make sure that you're giving them what they deserve and what they want so that they're going to come back and get some more of it with you. Absolutely. I mean, that's uh, that's the, the most important thing. And it's it's like you've, t you've said it very eloquently. I want to know everything the audience says. Sometimes my fiance, she doesn't understand why I go on Twitter. And I go, the reason I go on Twitter is I want to know what people are talking about. And I want to know reactions to my own stuff. It's my favorite platform. Yes. Twitter is everybody hates Twitter. Everybody cusses out Twitter. Twitter is, in my opinion, is the best platform as I, well. It is. It's the truest, the realest. Maybe besides Reddit, I don't spend a lot of time on Reddit because Reddit, that's too much reading for yeah, me. Yeah, Reddit, I'm, you know, I have the app. I mean, at one point, let's finish uh, it. sure, let's finish it. At one point, uh, Fernandez put me on the Reddit app when we were looking for certain things. And, you know, I Star go in there and listen, Star Wars stuff. And, it's, that, you know, and I've seen a few things. very in depth. Yes. Reddit is where you go. I believe Twitter feeds to Reddit as well. So like Twitter, you can get yourself a nice conversation talking about Star Wars, talking about Marvel, talking about right. whatever. And then suddenly somebody will post a Reddit link. And then once you go to that Reddit link, yeah. there's geniuses on Reddit. Oh, my God. I've seen some of these theories and some of these, you know, I don't necessarily uh, – to cheers. Thanks again. No, thank you. I don't necessarily buy into some, some person that drum, jumps in on Reddit and goes, uh, I know that the title for Star Wars Episode Nine. Happens to be like, do you? Son of Darkness in the Alliance and what he named Forrest Gump. And you're like, what? <laughs> what was that? Where'd you get that? Um, but I I like some of the conversations. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like like somebody just hit me up on Twitter, a DM. It was like, hey, I don't think Disney will do this, but I think this. And I was like, wait, that's cool. I'll, I'll talk to I will talk to you now and see. That's how a yeah. person works. That's how we work. Yeah, that's how you work. You like you just said. You see something on Reddit where you enjoyed that conversation. Well, guess what, Riley? That's what everybody's doing when they hear your roundtable. Yeah, they hear your roundtable and they hear, oh, I've heard these conversations a hundred times. Right. But the way that you're approaching this conversation because you put time, effort, and you're passionate about these conversations. Right. I want to listen to you do it because you know you, you're the realest, most relatable thing that I can connect to at the moment. That's what I want. That's, that's exactly and that's how what I want. you find it as well, isn't it? Yeah, and it it's it's interesting too. I want to bring up uh, with Fernandez. We did the Rule of Two, and we talked about the Vader fan film. Now the Vader fan film. The Vader fan film. I so heard Jeff's uh, Jeff's loving it. Can't wait to watch it. Right? Oh, Jeff Snyder. Snyder? Yeah, Jesus. can't wait. That fucking guy. <laughs> guy hates. It doesn't hate Star Wars, but it's just not his thing. Just doesn't. Just hates everything. Just <laughs> doesn't like his Star Wars. So I went. Oh, Glass is your Avengers Infinity War. Oh, that movie's That's gonna suck, gonna man. <laughs> Mr. Glass, some villain. I can push him over. And he breaks. And he just breaks. <laughs> movie's over, dude. Whatevs. Uh, no, but it, like the Vader fan film, it was interesting. A lot of my fans were tagging me on Twitter. Yeah. Riley, have you seen this? Riley, have you seen this? Riley, have you seen this? And I went, Jesus, what is going on right now? I better look at this. Watch the thing. And I'm like, damn, that's good. fucking good. Yeah. I enjoyed the hell out of it. Oh, I haven't seen it. I have it's to watch really it. good. So Fernandez and I did a whole episode on it and we talked about it. And it's like, yeah, we talk is like Fernandez and his love of um, or dare I say lack of love for The Last Jedi. He doesn't necessarily like the direction Disney's going. I'm the opposite. I like what they're doing. No, it's cool. And but we asked a question: Can Disney learn anything from this fan film? I say yes. And you know why? This guy made it with fucking passion. This guy put all of his money into it. You know, he raised money. He did the best he could do. Yep. And but that I don't even care about but any of the that. The word passion it's is the most the important. The story that it's he the got. Heart that I, you put the into heart. It. I'm a writer. You're first exactly. And, you're a writer as well. So I you went, see it immediately. Yes. I went, yeah. wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This guy, this guy is going into the psyche of Vader mm -hmm. and all he's doing is thinking about his wife that he killed and maybe the emperor had something to do with it. And I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to kill this guy and I'm going to then take over the universe to make him pay for killing my, and then I have visions of Padme. And I was like, this is a really great fan Brilliant. film. Exactly. Yeah. And so I wanted to talk about it and there was a little, there was pushback. And there was like, and I get it. You're passionate too. You're passionate for the Disney's, so you don't necessarily agree that a fan film can affect or vice versa. I'm just saying, I get it. I hear you. I want to have a conversation. That's all. That's it. I, I'm, I, I'm, I like to. Cons I don't consider myself this, but I, I'm a, a an expert fan. Yeah. So I'm not a genius in anything. I'm not smart or mm -hmm. like uh, very well versed or incredible. I know a little about a lot 
And I believe that's what the fan does as well. And then there's the super fans, like your Star Wars guys as well. Yeah. And you can tell when a fan says something compared to when somebody who's getting paid to say something or compared to when somebody who doesn't really are that interested in it. And right. that's the way that I believe the whole industry is going in general. Yeah. It just pretty much everything in life. If you, you can't fake your way through it anymore. You can't just be working at a big company and then collecting your paycheck and being able to move on. No. It's, it's still happening at certain places, but soon it's going to get to a point of where the fans are so smart. They're smarter than half the people who are making some of this stuff. And Jeff said the opposite thing on Movie Talk. He said that he would obviously much rather see these people who are getting paid by so-and-so because they're getting paid for a reason because they're the best at it. Maybe. Or maybe they were. Maybe they don't Maybe they haven't seen Star Wars as many times as you. Yeah. Maybe if they came onto the movie Trivia Schmodown and went on the Star Wars League, the people who work at George Lucasfilm, I got a feeling that you or Scrimshaw or uh, Alex could possibly beat them. Yeah, And that's where that difference comes in. Like mm -hmm. you say, that heart and that passion that can actually go into it by being like that true fan. Yeah. That's where that connection is then being able to get made. And that's why, like you say, that's why you love that fan film. Yeah. And I, that's why he, we love these. me. He connected me. Whereas he, Nathan he Drake, it. did you see Nathan Fillion's Nathan Drake one for it, Uncharted? It was great. See, did I, you not I, like it? I was a fan of the games, ah. and I don't think Nathan Fillion would do it very well, and I don't think he played him very well either. Oh, okay. So but see, see, see but yeah. you're probably more of a fan of Nathan Fillion than you were of the games. I and played, the way that was I played two, three of the games. Not, you know, just yeah. Like, Whatever. But you see that as a writer and a filmmaker, you see that and you're like, ah, oh, that's an awesome, brilliant idea real was, quick. I'll tell you right now, though, that Vader fan film, I think, is better than the Nathan Fillion Uncharted. Oh, I wouldn't uh, be surprised. I, I, it I, probably I, is. And it's because of the story. It's like this guy just really thought about goes deep into the psyche of Vader. And it's like, sorry. You can relate to that. I can relate to that. I can relate to that. But I also found it fascinating in yeah. the story element because Disney doesn't do – the the kind of deep dives that this Star Wars fan film did. They do broad strokes. We got to hit the saga. We got to hit this. We got to hit that. And that's not a just that's not a, a put down or anything like that. It's just that they they're doing something different. Yep. This is a short. This is two characters, the Emperor and Darth Vader. This is um, they're allow they're they're able to deep dive into the Darth Vader character. And we know that Darth Vader is pretty much dead in the Star Wars saga. So. We have that ability. So that's why I liked it. And it's not anything else. It's just I like the story. Yeah. That's all. So we got to wrap this up, man. Jack, what a hell of an episode. Oh, I love it, dude. I'm so happy. I'm uh, very grateful. Thank you. Well, I'm glad to have you here. Uh, you're, you, you say you don't do much of Twitter, but what is your Twitter handle? Hey. If anybody wants to hit you up and say, you know what, Jack? I really liked you on the Riley Roundtable. Hey, and if anybody is a foreigner and is looking at trying to get themselves over to America as well, that's the one thing that I like to try and help anybody out with. That, oh, that's, that's great. Well, that's my biggest experience. There's yeah. not a lot of people who have had to go... Well, there, there is, but yeah. not a lot of people that have come through Collider that have had to go through what I've had to go through. Exactly. Um, and that's one of the things that I am quite knowledgeable and useful in. So if anybody has any questions about how it is that I actually got here and what it is that I had to go through, if I can help in any way to any of you aspiring young filmmakers, internet personalities, whatever, feel free to hit me up. It's just at Jack Hind, J-A-C-K-H-I-N-D. Awesome. At Jack Hind on Twitter. And that'll do it. Episode 30 is in the books. Wow. Thank you, Jack, so much. Um, I can't wait to keep hanging out with you as my desk mate, making Collider a better yeah, place. Go back to work, shall we? Yeah, we'll go back to work <laughs> with a couple glasses of wine in us and being a little slurry. But who gives a shit? It's now the end of the day and I can handle it. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this latest episode 30 of the Riley Roundtable. I appreciate all of you listening. Make sure you subscribe. It's on one on one with Christian Harloff on the podcast one podcast feed and you can find us on the collider podcast youtube channel every thursday the riley roundtable drops so episode 30 in the books we'll see you next week bye bye